Roth, welcome to you. What more can you tell us about the hostage release, where they are right now? And given this hour, it is just past 8 p.m., is anything more expected today? So, Alex, as you mentioned, this is the third night in a row in which we have seen Israeli hostages emerging from Gaza and, in exchange, Israel releasing Palestinian prisoners in Jerusalem and the occupied West Bank. But, Alex, tonight the choreography was different. Most of those hostages, 13 of them, rather than going south through the Rafah crossing into Egypt, which is what we've seen over the last two nights, they were instead handed over to the Red Cross in northern Gaza, closer to Gaza City, and they went straight over the border into Israel. From there, one of those hostages, an elderly woman, was flown directly to hospital. She appears to be in serious medical condition. We don't have the details right now. The other 12 hostages continued on to an air base. Now, among those was this little four-year-old Israeli-American girl, Abigail Idan. And, Alex, it is worth just pausing for a moment on her story, not just because she's an American, but because of what this little child has been through. Both of her parents were murdered in the kibbutz Kfar Aza on the morning of October 7th. Her older siblings hid elsewhere in the house, and this little four-year-old walked away from her parents' bodies. She toddled over to a neighbor's house. She hid with them only for that family to be kidnapped. And she has been held in Gaza for these seven weeks. Officials here in Israel and in the United States working to bring her home. She is now safely back inside of Israel. But, Alex, sometime tonight or in the coming days, someone is going to have to explain to this little girl that both of her parents are dead, that she's an orphan. And she has a very, very long road ahead of her to recover from what's gone on these last couple of weeks. We are also expecting, Alex, one more Israeli citizen who is a dual Israeli-Russian national to be released alongside three Thai workers. And they will take that route through the Rafah crossing and then back into Israel. Now, you mentioned Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was on the ground inside of Gaza earlier today. We are on the third of four days of this ceasefire. Right now, if nothing changes, this ceasefire is due to expire at 7 a.m. local time on Tuesday. You heard President Biden earlier tonight saying that he is optimistic that there may be a possibility of extending this ceasefire further on this uh, pre-agreed formula, one additional day of ceasefire in exchange for 10 more hostages. But right now, nothing is clear. And unless that deal is solidified, the fighting will start again on Tuesday morning, as promised by the Israeli military. Now, we can say that there is this one elderly woman who has been flown straight to hospital, but I want to play you a little bit of sound from a doctor who was involved with the treatment of the hostages who emerged last night. Take a listen. We received um, uh, these uh, 12 uh, captives, uh, children and women um, that uh, came back. Um, they underwent uh, uh, a medical evaluation and a psychological evaluation. I am uh, happy to say that despite the fact that the uh, harsh conditions they have been under and the um, experience of captivity, they did not um, require any emergent medical uh, intervention. And, Alex, we spoke last night to the family of Ohad Munder Zikri. He's a nine-year-old boy. He was released on the first night of these hostage exchange. This relative told us that Ohad explained to them that when they were in Gaza, in the captivity of Hamas, they weren't physically abused, they weren't tortured, but he described incredibly difficult conditions. He said at some points they were going days without food. He said they slept on wooden benches, not beds. Uh, and like all these other children, he has a long road to recovery ahead of him.
Alex. Yeah, 100 percent. And let me just say, um, as I'm reading about this story about Abigail, which you so accurately discussed, the Brodette's family is the family whom she got over to. They had four of their family released today that includes a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 4-year-old. Uh, God willing, she was kept with them, which would have made it perhaps a little bit easier for them, for that mother or father to put their arms around all of those children together. It is absolutely heartbreaking. Very quickly, Roth, do you think they were released, this group today, the majority of them were released through the North because of the medical necessity of that elderly hostage that had to get hospital right away? That's our understanding, that they wanted to cut out this middle step rather than going through Egypt. They wanted to get this older woman over the border into the hands of the Israelis as quickly as they could. She was flown directly by helicopter to hospital here in Israel to be given immediate treatment. And we, of course, will keep you posted as soon as we know anything more about her condition.